beat the primary addiction and then pick up another because the spirit of addiction is still there. Still there. Or even if they don't um, pick up a specific behavior or chemical, you will see something we call the dry drunk phenomenon. So the person is dry. <laughs> they're not drinking, they're not doing whatever it was they were doing, <laughs> but they are still uh, crazy to be around. Really? They, they're still uh, you know, emotionally highly strung, impatient, restless, anxious, uh, all the behavior associated with addiction is still present. Hey everybody, my name is Angie Morenga. You're watching Just Angie. It's Mwenye Inchi Monday, and this is uh, part two of a conversation that we're having with Albert Moriah. He's an addiction counselor and a life coach, and we're talking about addictions. You are saying social costs and social relationships. Yes. Um so, because the brain is what is uh, uh, indicated in addiction, mm -hmm. and of course we use our brain that's, um, to, to make judgments, to make decisions, uh, and so forth, um, addiction directly impairs that, mm -hmm. our decision making, uh, our choices, and so forth. Mm -hmm. And so, um, because once the brain is addicted, its first priority is to protect the supply of whatever the source of addiction is. Mm. Uh, so if it's alcohol, they'll hide alcohol all mm. over, they'll tell lies about where they've been, and um, they'll misuse money, they'll change their priorities, their values, everything, so that the supply of alcohol is protected. If the source is something else, equally so. Now, of course, that will have social implications. Uh, we are social beings, we have relationships with ourselves, with God, with other people all of those relationships will be impacted. So um, the biggest victim of addiction is our relationships mm. with God, with yourself, and other Fellow people. Fellow human beings. Yeah. Um, and, and so what happens, because addiction is, is a process, um, mm. it takes time, uh, and that will vary depending on the source of addiction and the person, uh, what happens is that you begin to uh, manipulate your relationships mm. to support your addiction, yeah. whatever the, the nature of those relationships. Mm. So um, the person on the other end of the relationships begin to experience, um, you know, lies, manipulation, mm. uh, unreliability yeah. uh, on, on that level. Um, on another level though, you as a person begin to change also. Mm. Okay. It affects in a three-dimensional way, spirit, soul and body. Mm. And so, yeah. um, uh, and it, every aspect of, of your life is, is affected. I remember how when I quit smoking, mm. um, I suddenly noticed everything around me, my environment was so fresh. Mm. I stopped seeing ash all over. <laughs> I stopped seeing burnt fabric all mm. over. Uh, I didn't realize that everything smelt of, of the smoke. Mm. There's a staleness around me. Mm. Um, and so the, the addiction will permeate every, everything about you uh, and especially your relationships and so um, it'll cost you everything of value wow. whatever it is that you value whatever it is that is important in your life addiction will take wow. uh, and uh, aside from the end result mm. is a process itself uh, it, because it's not overnight it's painful mm -hmm. it's gradual um, both you, as you as you mentioned, and the people around you feel helpless. Mm -hmm. They don't understand this. This is confusing. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I have I have seen addiction counselors struggling with addiction. Really, but yeah. I think the best addiction counselors, because I I think I know you and one more, mm. are very good because if they've been there, if they've experienced it. But do they now transition into another addiction? Because that's another thing. Okay, for me as a as a coach and as a pastor, mm. sometimes I see, and I see also sometimes in my life, that mm. you put one addiction down, mm. but you pick up another one. Okay. That, that's a very interesting point, which mm. I want to come to in terms of the, what is addiction. Mm -hmm. um, but what I have seen is, um, you're right, a lot of addiction counselors are people who have been in addiction themselves, like myself, mm. um, but they 
clearly didn't deal with everything. They didn't deal with it properly. Oh, okay. So, uh, so there were still skeletons in the closet and then they come out and either because of exposure or for other reasons, um, you relapse back into the addiction. But you have all your training. You have all you the, know all the, the knowledge. knowledge. Yes, but you are unable to help yourself. So in this respect, it really is confusing. The other thing that you've mentioned is um, cross-addiction. Mm. Uh, where you beat one addiction, mm. but, but you pick another, another one. one rises. And I have concluded that that's because uh, addiction on a spiritual level, there is a spirit of addiction, yes, which needs to be uprooted. Yeah. And so you find uh, very commonly, um, somebody will stop drinking, if that was their primary addiction, mm -hmm. But they become food addicts. Yes. Or they become or porn, sweet addicts. Or, or you, sex addicts. You want addicts. sweet. You want something sweet yes. or something something emotional uh -huh. that triggers that uh -huh. behavior because you, you laid yeah. one addiction down for another one. And and you've hit the nail on the head because on on a solical level mm. you have learned. You're so being your mind, your, your will, will, and, and your, your emotions. emotions. You have learned to soothe yourself. Yes. With something, mm. a chemical, a mm. behavior, mm. Uh, and so forth. So when we talk, about, when we uh, deal with uh, 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 treating um, addicts, training them out of the addiction, a key element of the treatment is um, t teaching or reteaching life skills, and, and so that they learn how to manage mm. their emotions mm. without needing something externally to to mm. help soothe them. Okay. But beyond the solical, I believe. Um, Addiction is a, is a spiritual phenomenon. Definitely. And there are spirits of addiction. And, mm. and spirits are, have force. They have energy. They have power. And what I have observed is that uh, with all the best treatment, with all the best information, with all the best intentions, mm. somebody is able to beat a primary addiction and then pick up another because the spirit of addiction is still it's there. Still there. Or even if they don't... Um, pick up a specific behavior or chemical, you will see something we call the dry drunk phenomenon. So the person is dry. They're not drinking, they're not doing whatever it was they were doing, but they are still uh, crazy to be around. Really? They, they're still uh, you know, emotionally highly strung, impatient, restless, anxious. Uh, all the behavior associated with addiction is still present, but they're not drinking. And so, for the person who's around them, they might as well be drinking, drinking because, because they're still as bad as you were before. But you can imagine for the addict themselves, who is a dry drunk. Yes, it's it's an uncomfortable, difficult um, sort of experience. Um, uh, and there are people who live like that even for years, because they know I can't pick up whatever it was. I can't pick up, and they don't. But no other change has taken place. So, in fact, we talk about recovery being abstinence, doing away with the chemical, whatever it was, plus positive change. And that positive change is where you get into now the realm of transformation, into the realm of healing, into the realm of, of um, what I think is needed is a new identity. You need to see yeah. yourself differently. Mm -hmm. You need to connect, uh, I'm faith-based, so you need to connect with God differently. Mm -hmm. um, but even psychology itself mm. talks about needing to uh, have a new identity. Okay. Um, and so, uh, what, whatever choices we make in life generally, <clears throat> we make out of how we see ourselves, yeah. how we identify ourselves. Yeah. So if, you, if, if there is a compulsive behavior that you've been involved in, uh, that you need to change, mm. it needs to come off of uh, a different identity. Um, seeing yourself differently and thinking about yourself differently and then thinking about life differently. differently. Yeah. And I think for that, you need help. Is that something that you can do by yourself? I mean, I'm trying yeah. to reflect on my own addiction, mm. especially mm. the smoking one. Mm. I'm really trying to think about how did I get out of it? Mm. But it's funny that I knew mm. that I was done. Mm. Before I'd say I've stopped smoking, but I'd keep my, I'd hand over my cigarettes, mm -hmm. but I'd keep my lighter. Mm -hmm. The day I handed over both the cigarettes and the lighter, I knew I was done. Mm -hmm. But something else, and maybe you can explain it in the next video that happened for me, was there was a particular place I used to go and smoke. Uh -huh. So for seven days, yes. I didn't open that door. Okay. Actually forever. Uh -huh. But I, I, I felt like, I don't know why I knew. That's yeah. why I say we're such powerful spirit yeah. beings. But I could tell that for seven days, mm -hmm. 
I can't go through that door. I never went back there at all, but the first seven days were very, they were very key. And I never went even into that space where I used to smoke, I never went there. Because it may not be relevant, but you know, I love watching movies. Mm -hmm. But sometimes even when I'm watching a movie and there's been somebody who's addicted to somebody, mm -hmm. something, mm -hmm. I always find like, something's gonna happen and I'm like, this person is gonna relapse, like a trigger. Yeah. Like something completely dramatic is gonna take place yeah. and you just want to re revert to your default, yeah. default setting. Yeah. Mm. Um, interesting. We, there are things that we tag our behavior to. Really? Um, and so we talk about triggers. And the way memory works in the brain is that it works by association. So you'll see one thing and it will create a, a desire for something seemingly unrelated. But to you, there's a connection of some kind. They're related. So in fact, even when we're treating people, uh, one of the first things we do is help them understand what their own personal triggers are. My own trigger was a blue sky on a Saturday afternoon. You can't be serious, Albert. That, that would a blue sky is a beautiful thing. Would create a and desire on, on a Saturday afternoon. Not on another day. On a Saturday afternoon. Yeah, that was a trigger for me. Then I'd want to drink. Really? Yeah, the smell of nyamachoma. Would trigger? Lingala. I'd, I'd, the, 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 it's like the blood wow. will start boiling. Boiling. Yeah, because of uh, the association in the brain with those things and alcohol, in mm. my case. And for me, when it was certain music, but we have to stop. But actually, when I thought about it, because I remember when I really needed to deal with the addiction, I, I, I kept hearing my, um, myself ask the question, but I know it's the Holy Spirit. Mm. Where are you when you sin? Mm. And what causes the uh -huh. sin? Mine was also weekends, yes. but there was a certain kind of music. Let yeah. me tell you when that music starts. Yeah. The end. Yeah. yeah, so I'm off. So I'm glad now you're, you're making it um, all make sense. Okay. So hold that thought and we'll see you next Monday on Mwene Inchi Monday. Bye-bye. God bless. Mm.